Thank you. I thank the gentleman for yielding his time. Um, thank you, Secretary Hagel and, and General, for being here for your service. We appreciate it. Um, and I'm thinking that I remember on September 11th, a reporter was asked was asking a question to White House press secretary and said, "How are you defining victory?" And the White House press secretary said, "I don't have my Webster's dictionary with me up here." And what's on the minds of the American people, I know it's on my mind as well. That we've talked about um, degrading and destroying. And now those seems to be the two coins that we're understanding. We're degrading, which my understanding is we're slowing down this process. We're disrupting um, ISIL's maneuvers and operations. And then we're ultimately destroying. And I think it's a fair question to ask on behalf of all Americans that if this plan is successful, and there are so many doubts about this plan being successful, the big if, what is the end game? What does it look like with a destroyed ISIL? First, uh, destroying ISIL, which is, is clearly, as you have noted and we have said clearly, uh, uh, is not an easy or simple or quick task. And we have been very honest about that. We will continue to be honest about it. But uh, your question, what is the end state? Uh, it is a region and uh, it is a reality and a threat that is eliminated uh, from threats against the United States and against uh, our allies. So uh, that threat of beheadings, of uh, terrorist, sophisticated terrorist attacks, of slaughtering people, of uh, a barbaric uh, approach to everything they do, an ideology that uh, has nothing to do with religion, any re uh, re religion, um, the capacity that ISIL now possesses through their funding mechanisms, through their sophistication, through their organization, through their strategy, is a threat to everybody. So what does an end game look like? Is a world without that threat? Now, is the world always going to be dangerous? I suspect it uh, in our lifetimes it will be. But that uh, that's something that we are aware of, but we are dealing with the threat right now. Right. I understand it. And I understand the enormity of it and, and the complexity of it. And I think the American people do as well. But I think that it is a fair question to say, is, uh, you know, is success that we, we stop seeing beheadings? You mentioned that. Of course, that would be a measure of success. Is success that, the, um, that Iraq gets its territory back? That would be successful, I, I would imagine. You would agree. Um, that Syria stability in the Middle East. Stability in the Middle East. Partners. What about the caliphate in general? Is success also going to be measured in the fact that we no longer have a group of people that literally are going to insist on world dominance and a caliphate? Or are we ever going to be able to deal with that? Because it, it seems to me that if we don't continue to um, have some kind of a bold and aggressive approach, that there is some kind of democracy and freedom in that region with the very limited partners that we have, that there will never be an end game. And my fear, and I think the fear of the American people is, we have all heard this before. We have all gone down. We have all lived through this already. So what is the alternative? Do nothing? What does it look like if, there, if this plan doesn't work? What is the alternative? What does it look like in the Middle East then? Well, uh, we, we always have plan Bs and Cs. That is what the military does as well as anybody in the world. But we believe this plan will work. And we believe the, the way it is laid out with our partners, the structuring of it, the reality of it, the time frames of it, the partnerships commitments to this uh, will work. But back to your more fundamental questions, and I understand mm -hmm. uh, your question. As I said, I don't know if we will ever see a world without threats, mm -hmm. particularly your question about won't there always be threats out there with some extremist group wanting to uh, build a, an extremist caliphate uh, in the Middle East, I suppose. Uh, but I have got to worry about what I have right in front of me right now. And this is an immediate threat. Yes, we have to think long term. We do. Mm -hmm. We are trying to think through that as to what will work, what will be effective. Uh, how, how do we bring uh, the civilized world together to stop this? Right. Because the other way to ask that question, Congresswoman, is what if we don't? Correct. And my, my, just quickly, what else can we do as a Congress to make sure we get those passports away from the foreign fighters that are coming from America? Uh, thank you. I am glad you mentioned that because it is something that I noted in my testimony. It is a critical piece to this. Uh, it is a dangerous uh, and real threat with uh, those kind of individuals floating around out there possessing those passports with easy access. As I said, we are coordinating with using every interagency force we have, coordinating with 
our partners all over the world and databases, everything that we can do right now uh, uh, to uh, address this, to identify those threats out there, to stop those threats. Some countries are, are further ahead, like the U.K., probably further ahead than almost anyone. Uh, but uh, I just was in a National Security Council meeting late yesterday afternoon when we came back from Tampa. The President chaired, and the Attorney General was there, Secretary of Homeland Security there. Uh, we were all there. This was a, a big part of the topic, in fact, was the central part of the topic, foreign fighters, and, and the President wanted updates, and he gets them every week, on what are we doing, how much are we doing, how much can we still do, and what do we have to do. So. It is a big part of what we are doing here. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back my time. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Thank you.